Hey guys, in this tutorial we'll be making sandballs digging mechanics. So yeah, let's get started. I have two planes and the plane that we'll be deforming will stay in the front. So the yellow, the one with the yellow material is what we are going to deform. I made this plane in Pro Builder, so I could subdivide it. I'll just select the plane and there's an option to subdivide object. Let's select it. You can see we have lost more vertices. Now let's go to our camera and add a new script. We'll throw a recast from our starting from our mouse position, and we'll see what object it hits. So I just did input dot get mouse button down. When we get the mouse button down at zero index, we'll deform mesh. In here, let's make a recast. I'll do. I made variable for ray and for our raycast hit. Now in here, let's do ray equals to. Okay, before doing that, let's give reference to our camera. Just cam dot screen point to ray. Input dot mouse position. All right. Now let's do if physics. Physics dot recast array and our recast hit. Now in here, we'll deform the mesh. So for deforming the mesh, I'll add another script in our plane, the plane that we'll be deforming. So I'll name it deform plane. Let's add the script. and open it in visual studios i made a white function that will take vector 3 now i'll okay before before going any further we'll get the mesh of our plane which is stored inside a mesh filter so I just did get component mesh filter and we'll be storing all the vertices of our mesh in a array of vector 3 words. You guys can watch our video on procedural map to understand deformation much better. In here, deform this plane. Let's make it a public function because we'll be calling it from our camera script. Now, let's make a for loop. For our condition, I'll just do words dot length. Now we just with this line of code, we just converted our position to deform in the local space of our plane. For that, we did transform dot inverse transform point and position to deform. So let's check the distance. Let's do float distance equal to words words i minus position to deform dot square magnitude so for each distance for distance less than a float value this will be a radius in which the vertices will be getting affected. So I'll just name it radius for distance that is less than radius. We'll just do words i minus equal to vector 3 dot up. And I'll make another float. This will control the power at which we want the deformation to happen. So let's multiply this power. I'll make both the fields serialized so we can edit them.
and at the end we'll just set the vertices back again so plane mesh dot vertices equal words all right right now we are we are not calling this function anywhere so let's open our camera script and let's do deform plane we'll get our deform plane script so let's do hit dot get hit dot transform dot get component deform plane and in our deform plane dot deform this plane and for the vector vector 3 we'll just do hit hit dot point so now we can test it but let, let's give these values let's do 4 and 1 and let's see ok it's, it's getting deformed just like we wanted so maybe let's reduce the radius a bit ok now in blender I made this cylinder which is made of small blocks so all these blocks are different are different objects I'll probably add a link in description so you guys can download this model this step is really important for making smooth edges as well as collision so I imported our model from blender and uh, I decreased the scale in y axis and made a prefab of it and we have like th we have 32 cylinders these small objects are uh, 32 and I added another child object to it in which I added a capsule collider which is a trigger so that's all the setup that I did let's override all the changes and uh, inside a camera script I'll be instantiating these I, I'll be instantiating this prefab give the reference to it I'll make a serialized field transform and I'll name it ring prefab so instantiate ring prefab at hit dot hit dot point and uh, for rotation we'll do quotidian dot Euler minus 90 0 0 okay at this point these rings are getting instantiated we might wanna play around with the radius a bit let's try 0 0.7 okay this seems better but one thing you guys will notice is that it's on top of the plane so let's fix that use hit dot point for x and y let's make a new vector 3 so do hit dot point dot x and same for the y hit, hit dot point dot y for the z axis of, of our ring we'll do hit dot point dot z plus we'll be adding a float so this float be float will be our rings y axis uh, sorry our rings y scale so uh, the y scale of my ring is 0 0.11 so i'll be just adding it right now okay let's try it now so you'll see it's submerged really well into into our plane and that's what we want now let's take the take this yellow material and use it for all our blocks and let's override our prefab you see we have those smooth edges just like we wanted them but right now if we'll overlap so let's let's start working on it now for all our blocks we'll add mesh collider to it and in our trigger object and our trigger game object in which I have a capsule collider which is a trigger I'll add a new script ring script and also add a rigid body 
to the trigger. Now let's open our ring script and let's add on trigger enter and destroy. Let's first check for the tag if other dot tag equals ring block then we'll destroy our other dot game object all right i'll make a new tag ring block and assign it to all the blocks so we'll remove use gravity and make it kinematic let's override all the settings again and try it now okay so it's working better i made it get mouse button instead of get mouse button down and our trigger object let's put it on ignore raycast layer so the raycast doesn't get blocked by it i'll apply all the settings and and we have our sandballs game mechanics somewhat of course you can make it even better just by changing few values like the scale of this trigger yeah that's that's much better i added a spare with rigid body to test it one issue i had was the mesh colliders of the block were pushing the ball before getting destroyed to solve that that i made an array of colli mesh colliders and for each of the collider i enabled them in start i did this in our ring script because it's a serialized field i can drag all these colliders and add them give reference now let's override again you are calling this function all the time with get mouse button so it it was fine with get mouse button down but with get mouse button i the changes i did was i made a new vector 3 last position which stored the last position of a mouse position and if this if the square magnitude of last position minus our current position current mouse position current mouse position is bigger than 2 only then we'll be calling it or okay, this was our final output i did few changes made it a bit optimized by adding coroutines thanks for watching if it was helpful you can leave a like and subscribe to the channel for future updates